All right, everybody, if you want to take your seats, we'll get started. Hey, real quick, let's start off on a little bit of a lighter note. I got a big surprise for you guys. I was able to secure a donation of a car, a brand new car. Somebody's going to drive away from here in a brand new car. So what I need each of you to do is look under your seat to see if you won the brand new car. Look under your seat. Do we have any winners? Anybody? Casey, Laura, what have you done? All right, somebody's going to eventually find it, and they're going to be thrilled with their brand new car. All right, well, a little something to cut the ice. Um, let's get started. Pipe Major Kelly, if you please. Best in the business. I'm a little biased. How about a big hand for the Police Department of Pipes and Drums? <laughs> Thank you all. I'm very uh, humbled and honored to be your MC today. Um, it's been a rough couple of, year, couple of years. We weren't here last year, obviously. We're happy to have you all here today. So, 
For that, now can I ask you to please rise for the entrance of our Officers of the Year, Nicholas Giordano and Juan Santiago, and Telecommunicator of the Year, Jennifer Chismark. Then please remain standing for the presentation of the colors and the national anthem by the Joliet Police Honor Guard, followed by our invocation by Father Chris Groh. Let us pray. Lord God of all ages, you have made us and created us in your own image. You have made us with a desire that we serve one another, that we care for one another, that we provide for the needs of our brothers and sisters. We have come here together today because we remember your call to serve the community. And we also gather to honor all of our awardees for their courage, for their hard work, for their dedication. We ask that you be with us today and every day. And in a special way, bless us as we gather to share the food and drink which you give to nourish and to sustain us. For we honor you today and always as our one Lord and God forever and ever. Thank you to the, the Joliet Police Department Honor Guard and to Father Chris for such a meaningful invocation. Uh, next up, I'll have Joliet Police Department Chief Don Malik for some opening remarks.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Joliet Police Department 2021 Awards Ceremony. I'd like to thank those here from the Jacob Henry Mansion for once again providing us with such a beautiful venue. I'd like to recognize some of our officials that are here with us today. City Manager Jim Caparelli, Councilwoman Jan Quillman, Mayor Bob Oderkirk, Councilman Joe Clement, State's Attorney James Glasgow, Police and Fire Chairman Todd Wooten, and Police and Fire Commissioner Quinn Adamowski. Thank you all for joining us and celebrating the men and women of the Joliet Police Department. Today, you will hear accounts of just some of the outstanding accomplishments of our officers from 2019 and 2020. I appreciate the time that was taken by those supervisors and the co-workers that chose to provide documentation regarding events that led us to coming together today. I am proud of the work that the men and women of the Joliet Police Department do each and every day. All of our members, both civilian and sworn, work diligently each day to provide our citizens with the dignity and respect that they deserve. I'm truly impressed with all of their efforts and thankful for their dedication. I would like you to take a moment to look around the walls in this room. Hanging are plaques representing the officers that through our, our history have given the ultimate sacrifice while serving and protecting our community. I pray that we never have to add another plaque. I would like to take a moment to recognize our Joliet Police Department's fallen officers.
Thank you to our pipes and drums for such a great performance. Now to introduce our guest speaker. John Lausch Jr. has been the United States Attorney for the Northern District of Illinois since November of 2017. Mr. Lausch serves as the top federal law enforcement official in the Northern District of Illinois, which contains approximately nine people, or 900 people, in 18 counties. The office is widely recognized for significant prosecutions involving international terrorism, violent crime, public corruption, cyber crime, financial fraud, nar narcotics, civil rights, and numerous other criminal and civil matters. As the United States Attorney, Mr. Lausch manages more than 300 employees, including approximately 152 assistant U.S. attorneys in Chicago and Rockford. What makes having him here today even more special is that Joliet is John's hometown. He is a graduate of Joliet Catholic High School, where he captained his high school football team to the state championship in 1988. This past May, we had the privilege of listening to John speak at the Will County Law Enforcement Officers Memorial. He speaks very passionately about his hometown and his admiration for law enforcement officers. So choosing someone to guest speak at this year's ceremony was extremely easy. It is my distinct honor to present to everyone, John Lausch. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you for the very kind introduction, Chief. Um, and it's, it's really my pleasure to be here. Um, as, as the Chief mentioned, um, Joliet is my hometown. And my friends and I um, would always say, and you know, this, this saying people say a lot of times about their hometown, you, know, you can take the boy out of Joliet, but you can't take the Joliet out of the boy. And I, and I have to tell you, I, I feel that way about me, and I really hope that's the case, because I loved every minute growing up here. I have outstanding parents. My mother still lives here. Uh, brothers and sisters, coaches, teachers, friends, and loved ones. Um, and I really feel like this is an outstanding community. Um, and, and all that is good about me, um, you know, I think has come from my time growing up here in Joliet. So it's great to be back. Um, I feel really fortunate to have the job that I have as the U.S. Attorney here in, in Northern Illinois. And one of the main reasons why I love this job is my ability to work with you all, is to work with the police. Each and every day, you do whatever it takes to keep people safe. Um, and that is a noble profession. You can never, ever, ever lose sight of that. Um, and so with that in mind, there's just a few things that I want to address briefly today. First and foremost, I want to thank all of you for what you do each and every day to enforce the law and to ensure the safety of the people of this great community. Your answer to the call of duty each and every day, um, you keep the peace and you protect the law-abiding members of this community from those who seek to do it harm. We all know that 85% of all law enforcement work is done at the state, county, or the local level. It's done by you all. It's not done by us on the federal level. You are the ones that make a difference for safety each and every day. In addition to thanking you all for your dedication and courage and commitment, I think it's also important that I recognize and that you all recognize your family members and loved ones. Um, your spouses, your kids, your parents, your other family and friends, it's not easy for them, and you know that. Um, it's not easy for them worrying about you each and every day both your physical health and your mental health in a challenging job like this, um, and to worry about whether or not you're going to make it home safely each and every night. So I also want to send a big thank you not only to our law enforcement officers, but to the family members of our law enforcement officers, including those of you who are here today. The second thing I want to do, um, comment on this morning, is obviously I want to congratulate everyone who's receiving an award. Um, we're soon going to we're soon going to hear about all your remarkable work, which includes thoughtful, diligent, courageous activities that's led to the apprehension of violent offenders, or has worked to enhance the relationship between your police department and this great community. That relationship between you and the community is essential 
and it must be nurtured in order to keep this community safe from the drug dealers, from the thieves, from the trigger pullers, and from others who seek to do harm. You all are our heroes, and you are the heroes of each and every person in this community. Um, and you do this work on a daily basis. And so your recognition today is very well deserved. And then finally, the third kind of main thing I thought I would address just very briefly, is I want to share a word or two about your work as the police and our joint mission as police and prosecutors to hold people accountable and to keep our community safe. So one of the founding principles of this country, right, it's right in our Constitution, it's at the very front of our Constitution, is to ensure that people are safe and secure. If you go to the preamble of the Constitution, the first few words, it says, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and for our posterity. So think of those words for a second. Promote the general welfare. Ensure domestic tranquility. Establish justice. These are bedrock principles of this nation, and they are provided by you each and every day in doing your job. You are the domestic peacekeepers of this nation. Now you hear a lot right now, pick up a newspaper, you listen to the radio, catch a podcast, cable news, you hear it all the time, right? You hear a lot right now about the need to reform policing. And to be sure, there's room for improvement, there's always been room for improvement, and frankly, there always will be a desire to continuously improve our police techniques, community engagement, and overall professionalism. The lessons from the past few years have shown us all how it is important to keep getting better. As part of that effort, proactive, aggressive, effective enforcement of the law must continue to be an essential element of how we operate as the police. We often hear that we can't arrest our way out of our crime problem, and to be sure, enforcement is one of the parts of the solutions to helping make our community safer. But make no mistake, active and aggressive enforcement is a critical and necessary element of every single effective strategy, every single effective strategy to fight violent crime and keep people safe. On the face of the Department of Justice building in Washington, where I spent a lot of time over the last three years, there are inscriptions all over the building talking about the role of justice in our constitutional democracy. There's one particular quote that's up there. It's in Latin. But when it's translated, here's what it says. From law and order, everything else flows. From you doing your job, everything else flows in this country. Peace and liberty. Think about it. People need to feel safe, especially in our most challenged communities. Um, if they don't have faith in the police, if they don't trust you, they won't work with you. A big part of that trust and confidence is you doing your job, which is apprehending offenders and then holding them accountable, going to prosecutors like us to ensure that we can hold people accountable through our justice system so we can specifically deter those people and then generally deter others. Now, to state the obvious, right, it's a tough time to be a cop, right? We all know that. It's perhaps tougher now than at any point in our lifetime, and I can say at least during my lifetime, my adult lifetime, it seems like it's tougher now to be a police officer than another. But I want you all to know and to never forget that we need you, okay? And the overwhelming majority of the people in this country, which is oftentimes a silent majority, they respect you, they appreciate you, and they admire you for the work you do each and every day. I know you don't do the job to get that respect or admiration or that appreciation. You do it because you're committed to the mission and you're committed to each other. And that is what matters. So with all that in mind, I want to leave you with just a few more words of encouragement. And they're not mine. I'm going to borrow them from a, a famous person who talked about what really matters for people who do a tough job, like your job. 
These words come from former President Teddy Roosevelt. As some of you may know, before he became president in 1901, Teddy Roosevelt was the vice president of the United States. He actually was the governor of New York. And for a short time before he was governor of New York, he actually was the commissioner of the New York City Police Department. He was the number one commissioner in that police department. And like everything else that Roosevelt did, he took the bull by the horns, and he was actually known to walk a beat with cops from time to time when he had that role. And actually, it wasn't too long before he became president. But at one point, after he was finished serving, he gave a lot of speeches. And he gave one speech, which was entitled Citizenship in a Republic. And in that speech, he confronted those people who criticized or mocked others who were trying to make a difference in the world at that time. People who criticized or mocked people like you, who are working for others, doing a tough job. And here are his words, and I think they're very fitting for what you do in your profession. So he said, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error or shortcoming, but who actually strives to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows that in the end, the triumph of high achievement, or at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither defeat nor victory. Each and every one of you who wears that badge, you strive valiantly to keep the people of Joliet safe. You know the great enthusiasms of this job and you know, more than anyone, the unwavering devotion that must come in order to do this job the right way. And if I can say anything, I am here to assure you that you certainly, absolutely spend your time for a very worthy cause. And for that, we are all eternally grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Harsh. We appreciate you being here. Uh, real quick before we eat, um, I do have a quick presentation. Um, get my papers in, please. So on this occasion in which we honor the accomplishments of our current members, it is incumbent upon us to celebrate the lives and careers of the members that come before us. Their contributions to the Joliet Police Department and law enforcement in general has molded the very ideals for which our organization continues to uphold. I am extremely thrilled and humbled to take this moment to honor one of these individuals. Detective Maxine Boykin, badge number 401. Can you come up here, Maxine, please? <laughs> Surprise. Yes. <laughs> so, she began her career, is this right? Is it 1961 or is it? Earlier. Earlier. It was earlier. 59? Yes. Okay. 1959, uh, when the Joliet Police Department was located at 76 North Joliet Street. Maxine was the first African American female police officer to be hired by the city of Joliet. At the beginning of her career, then Officer Boykin found herself being assigned to the radio room or a traffic clerk. And she tells us, because obviously it was such a man's job then. She would be later assigned to the Investigations Bureau where she would resume and, and remain until her retirement in early 2000, closing out over 40 years at the Joliet Police Department. When Detective Boykin began her career, law enforcement was considered a man's job as females were woefully underrepresented, relying on her strong faith, respect for her fellow person, and her love for her hometown Detective Boykin rose above race and gender discrimination to leave her mark up upon the Joliet Police Department. Detective Boykin was born and raised in Joliet and still continues to live here today. 
In recognition of her dedication to our department and to the citizens of Joliet, please join me in presenting Detective Maxine Boykin with a shadow box which contains her original badge, which actually does say police woman. So we have this to present to you. Thank you. In honor of your service to the city. Thank you. Thank you. We will take a break in our program so we can eat. Has anybody won the car yet? Cool. All right, enjoy your lunch prepared by the uh, Jacob Henry Mansion. Okay, everyone, please feel free to keep eating. We're going to get the uh, award ceremony on the road here. First up, we have the uh, Unit Merit Award. Receiving Unit Merit, the first Unit Merit Award, uh, Patrol Officers Robert Badisher, Eric Gutierrez, James Kilgore, uh, Lisa Nicodemus, David Szymanski, Daniel Willis, Detectives Michael Cagle, David Jackson, Sergeant Tim Powers, Telecommunicator Tiber Jones, Teresa Ward, and Joseph Ellsberg. If you're here, if you could please rise. On February 14th of 2020, you were part of a team that dispatched, responded to, and investigated an armed robbery at the Verizon store on Jefferson Street. It was learned that a tracking device was placed in the proceeds from the robbery. The suspect vehicle was located but refused to stop and a pursuit ensued. The pursuit was eventually terminated for safety but the tracking device was still being monitored by dispatch. Through communication and coordination with surrounding departments, the three suspects were late, later located and charged with armed robbery, armed habitual criminal, possession of a stolen motor vehicle, unlawful restraint, unlawful use of a weapon by a felon street gang member, and aggravated fleeing and eluding. In all, it was estimated that, that $40,000 in electronics and $1,500 in currency were taken, but later recovered due to everyone's efforts. Congratulations to you all. <laughs> Patrol officers Paul Schulman, Nathan Loudon, Bruce Trevilian, Jose Hernandez, and evidence technician Jerry Austin. On May 9th, 2020, you responded to a disturbance that was later determined to be a home invasion. While investigating, the suspect vehicle's description was given and a traffic stop was conducted. The suspect was detained and was positively identified by the victim. The suspect provided a full confession and items used in the commission of the offense were collected as evidence. Congratulations. <laughs> Patrol officers Kyle Killian, Thomas Rodiger, and Jonathan Rutkowski. On June 7, 2020, you were part of a team that, inve that investigated a call for shots fired. Information gathered in reference to the suspect vehicle was given by JPD dispatch. Approximately 20 minutes later, this, the vehicle was located, but refused to stop and a pursuit ensued. During the pursuit, a passenger fled on foot from the vehicle. The vehicle finally came to a stop and the remaining occupants were arrested. The fleeing suspect was later arrested hiding in a nearby yard. Located within arm's reach of the suspect was a loaded handgun, which was confirmed to be the weapon used in the shooting. Congratulations. Patrol officers Chad Evans, Greg Kazak, Michael Pauly, Leslie Sagala, Adam Stapleton, and Daniel Willis. On July 15, 2020, you were part of a team that investigated the call of shots fired. You were in the area and heard the shots being fired. You located the suspect vehicle, but it refused to stop, and guess what? A pursuit ensued. During the pursuit, an occupant exited the fleeing vehicle and fled on foot. You were eventually able to get the car to stop and place the driver into custody. A perimeter is established to locate the other suspect. Officers and canine officers conducted a search and located a suspect hiding in a child's playhouse. The bag he was carrying was also recovered and it contained two handguns. Congratulations on a job well done. <laughs> uh, 
Patrol Officers Chad Evans, Adam Stapleton, and Alan Verton. On January 13, 2021, you were part of a team that, of officers that responded to and investigated a call of shots fired. You were provided with a description of the suspect vehicle. You all know the rest. It refused to stop and a pursuit ensued. The suspect vehicle was smoking and slowed due to traffic. The suspect vehicle then attempted to flee using the shoulder on Interstate 80. The driver lost control of the vehicle at that time and swerved into a ditch. Two suspects fled on foot and one remained in the vehicle. One suspect was observed discarding a silver firearm while, fle while fleeing. All subjects were eventually taken into custody. Congratulations. <laughs> Patrol officers Cal Killian, James Lukasik, and Jonathan Rutkowski. On January 26, 2021, you were part of a team of officers that were called to a call of shots fired. You were in the area when you noticed two suspicious subjects who matched the description from a previous shooting. You immediately made contact with these subjects and noticed an outline of a pistol in the pocket of one subject. The same subject ran and a fur pursuit ensued. The fleeing subject discarded the pistol while running. He was later taken into custody and the pistol was located. The suspects were interviewed and confessed to possessing the weapon as well as admitting to their involvement in the shooting. Well done, officers. Next up, I'd like to present an award from the Illinois Juvenile Officers Association. It is the Illinois Juvenile Officers Association Distinguished Service Award for Officer James Durham. The Illinois Juvenile Officers Association has recognized you for your outstanding work in PAT, which stands for Police and Children Together. You organized the PAT camp from 2015 to 2019. The camp involves juveniles from the Forest Park area and the Warren Sharp Community Center who are between the ages of 10 and 14. You have also been instrumental in securing funding for the camp, for the PAT camp. Congratulations on a job well done. All right, next up, we have Department Commendations. This is an award granted to any member for an outstanding act or achievement that brings credit to the department and involves performance above and beyond that required by the member's basic assignment. First up, we have Patrol Officer Jameer Price. On February 14, 2020, you overheard a call for an armed robbery at the Verizon store on Jefferson Street. While en route to the location, you learned that a tracking device was placed in with the proceeds from the robbery, you were able to locate the suspect vehicle and attempted to make a felony traffic stop. The suspect vehicle initially stopped, but soon after began to flee and a pursuit ensued. During the pursuit, you gave pertinent information on the suspect vehicle and its direction of travel. The pursuit was eventually terminated for safety concerns. Three suspects were later located and charged with armed robbery, armed habitual criminal, possession of a stolen motor vehicle, unlawful restraint, unlawful use of a weapon by a felon street gang member, and aggravated fleeing and eluding. In all, it was estimated that $40,000 in electronics and $1,500 in currency were taken, but later recovered due to your efforts. Congratulations. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, retired Sergeant John Stefanski on May 31st. 2020, you responded to the business area around the Lewis Juliet Mall in an effort to prevent damage and looting at the retail stores in that area. You arrived at the Target store on Plainfield Road and observed people running in and out of the store carrying stolen items. You were alone at this time and were getting surrounded by more individuals attempting to loot the store. You detained one of the suspects that was involved. While doing so, you were surrounded by the angry looters who were shouting and attempting to prevent the arrest. You then gave chase as the suspect fled. After a foot pursuit, you were able to take that individual into the custody. The suspects were charged with burglary, mob action, and criminal damage to state-supported property. Congratulations. <laughs> Next is Patrol Officer Arthur Arellano. On November 16, 2020, you were dispatched to a residential burglary that had occurred overnight. Items were stolen from the residence, which included an assault rifle, two handguns, two handguns, and a game console. Game console. After a thorough investigation, you learned that a window was left open in the residence so an out-of-state friend could have access to the home. You obtained all pertinent suspect information and a search warrant was conducted on the suspect's residence in Indiana. 
All three weapons were recovered, and the suspect was charged accordingly. Congratulations. Next is Patrol Officer Peter Ranstead. On December 9, 2020, you were dispatched to the Menards on Jefferson Street in reference to two suspects attempting to pass counterfeit currency fraudulent $100 bills. The suspects fled in a vehicle. While checking the area, you located the suspect vehicle and the occupants who matched the suspect description. You were able to search the vehicle and located several other fraudulent $100 bills. You furthered your investigation and contacted the United States Secret Service and learned that these same individuals were passing counterfeit currency throughout the Will County area. Both subjects were charged with two counts of forgery. Congratulations. <laughs> Patrol Officer William Otis. On December 30th, 2020, you overheard a dispatch and the description of the suspects of a felony retail theft that occurred at the Walmart on Route 59. You checked the hotels in your sector for the suspects in their vehicle. You located the suspect vehicle at an area hotel and spoke to a credible source of the hotel who previously provided reliable information on criminal activity in the past. That person led you to the hotel room of the suspects, which resulted in two felony retail theft arrests along with recovering the proceeds. Congratulations. Next up, we have the certif uh, Citizen Cert Certificate of Appreciation. This is an award granted to a deserving individual for a deed which is worthy of recognition. Jabari Jackson, on sep September 22, 2020, while driving in the 800 block of Hickory, you observed smokes, smoke and flames coming from a residence. You immediately called 911, then knocked on the door to alert the residents about the fire. All of the residents were evacuated safely and without injury due to your quick response. Congratulations. Next is the Citizen Citation, an award granted to a citizen who, whose action resulted in the prevention or solution of a serious crime, the apprehension of a dangerous criminal, or other meritorious action where said assistance to the officer or officers was done with disregard to the recipient's personal safety. Nathan Adair, Alec Page, Nico Rangel, and Connor Turlip. While in the area of Route 59, you observed a van driving recklessly, putting citizens at risk. You followed the van to a nearby parking lot while giving JPD dispatch updates over the phone. You provided a description of the suspect who fled from the van on foot. Your description of the suspect helped officers to detain the suspect. You remained at the scene and positively identified the suspect as the driver of the van. It was later learned that the van was recently stolen out of Chicago. Congratulations. The Citizen Award for Valor, an award granted to private citizens who voluntarily come to the aid of a police officer or another citizen at great personal risk of their own lives in situations arising out of criminal activity wherein the citizen involved has no personal motive or stake in the outcome. Robert DeVilbus, on September 7, 2020, while riding your skateboard, you observed a vehicle crash into a retention pond. Without hesitation, you shed some clothing and entered the water in an attempt to save the driver. You put your own life at risk to try to help a fellow citizen. Congratulations. And lastly, for Citizen Awards, the Citizen Life Saving Award. An award granted to citizens who are directly responsible for saving a human life. Latrice Cook. On September 8, 2020, while at the Dollar General, you observed a fellow citizen slumped over the steering wheel in his car. The subject was unconscious and barely breathing. Without regard to your own personal safety, you pushed the subject into the passenger seat and drove him to the hospital. The subject was suffering from an overdose of heroin and would have likely died if it were not for your action. Congratulations. If the command staff could make their way to the stage, please. Next, we have the Silver Life Saving Award, an award granted to any member of the department for a successful effort that, with the great likelihood, saved a human life. 
The recipients of the following award, I would ask that you enter the stage from this side to meet the command staff and then exit from this side back to your seats. Patrol officers Christopher Darcy and Charles Moore. On December 24, 2019, you responded to a call of a subject that had been shot. Upon your arrival, you met with other officers that were attending to the juvenile victim. The juvenile had a gunshot wound to the pelvic area and was bleeding. Using your training and experience, you began to pack the wound with hemostatic gauze to stop the bleeding. You then held direct pressure over the wound until relieved by JFD medics. Due to your quick thinking and training, you were able to provide life-saving measures to allow the victim to be transported to the hospital for further care. Congratulations. <laughs> patrol Officer James Hogan. On May 31st, 2020, you were on patrol and observed a woman standing by the guardrail of a bridge. You exited your squad and began to speak with a distressed woman who was planning to jump. You grabbed the woman by her clothing and pulled her to safety. The woman was unharmed and transported to the hospital after admitting that she was suicidal. Congratulations. Patrol officers Adam Blasky and Bruce Trevilian. On October 24, 2020, you were dispatched to the 100 block of North Ottawa Street for a shooting, where two people were shot. Upon arrival, you were met with a chaotic scene and noticed that one individual was critically wounded. The individual was bleeding profusely from the leg. You went directly to the victim and provided life-saving measures by applying a tourniquet and medical dressing over the victim's wound to stop the bleeding. You displayed an incredible amount of professionalism and your actions undoubtedly saved that victim's life. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have the Award of Merit, an award granted to any member of the department for any outstanding accomplishment where the member has gone far beyond the requirements of his or her normal assignment or outstanding police work which has brought credit to the department for a cause of unusual public interest. Detective Jeffrey German. In the year 2020, you were instrumental in almost all major cases in the investigations division. During that time, you became a subject matter expert in call detail records and geolocation analyst, as well as being a certified cell phone examiner. You used these skills to investigate the most violent crimes in the city. By analyzing cell phone data and video footage, you were able to secure murder charges on five different cases, identified suspects in an armed robbery crew, identified a suspect who was dealing illegal guns to criminals. In addition, you began cold case investigation on 26 murders. Using your knowledge and cell phone analysis, you were able to gain pertinent information, develop new witnesses and suspects in these murder cases. Congratulations. Next, we have the Award of Heroism. This is an award presented to any member in the, in the performance of duty who ex exemplifies the highest standards of professionalism by displaying unselfish, unselfish courage, bravery, and gallantry. Patrol officers Joshua Batong, Christopher Fitzgerald, Anthony Hall, Andrew McHugh, and Eroberto Rodello. On September 7, 2020, you were dispatched to the area of Mirage Drive as a witness observed a vehicle crash into a fire hydrant, then drive into a retention pond. Upon your arrival and without regard for your own safety, you removed your duty gear and entered the water. You repeatedly dove under the water to attempt to gain entry into the vehicle to save the driver. Without hesitation, you put your life in danger in an attempt to save another. Congratulations. Next, we have the Martin Muir Medal, an award granted annually to a sworn member of the department whose act of outstanding bravery or heroism has demonstrated a great degree, or was, I'm sorry, was demonstrated in great degree, the characteristics of selflessness, personal courage, and devotion to duty. Patrol Officer Ryan Killian. On May 27, 2019, you and your partner, Officer Lukasik, received a dispatch for a well-being check on a Excuse me, uh, Officer Lukasik, you can join him as well. Sorry. 
You and your partner, Officer Lucchese, have received a dispatch for a well-being check on a female on Justice Lake Drive. You and your partner were the first to respond. Upon approaching the residence, you heard a disturbance inside. Just as you were about to force entry, you heard a loud explosion and flames were visible from inside the residence. Without regard to your own personal safety, you forced entry into the home. You were immediately fired upon by the suspect. You then observed your partner in distress and believed that he had been shot. You moved to the, an area of cover, then observed the female victim running and the suspect chasing her with a gun in his hand. Fearing for the victim's life, you fired your weapon at the suspect. You then observed the suspect on top of the victim, still possessing a weapon which was pointed at you. The suspect discharges weapon again and you return fire at the suspect, striking him. You were then reunited with your partner and other JPD officers who helped to secure the scene and tend to both subjects. You showed outstanding bravery and courageousness during this incident in an attempt to save the life of another. Congratulations. Next up, we have the Telecommunicator of the Year, an award presented to a Communications Center member who has demonstrated the highest level of personal and professional conduct and performance in the line of duty. Telecommunicator Jennifer Chismark. Jennifer Chismark is a veteran dispatcher with over 24 years service in the Juliet 911 Communication Center. Throughout her career, she has been nominated and awarded several honors, including a life-saving award. Jennifer is widely respected throughout the department. She always presents herself professionally as the kind of coworker you want in the room with you every day. Her experience and job knowledge are invaluable to many who consider her a mentor, and she sets the standard for what a Juliet 911 telecommunicator, telecommunicator should be. This past year was unprecedented experience for the Juliet Police Department. Jennifer went above and beyond what was expected and demonstrated daily why she observed more than anyone to be named the Juliet 911 Telecommunicator of the Year for 2021. Jennifer was also submitted as a candidate for the 2021 Will County 911 te Telecommunicator of the Year by her director. And I'm very pleased to announce that she was chosen winner for that award as well. It is our honor to present her with the Juliet 911 Telecommunicator of the Year as well as the Will County 911 Telecommunicator of the Year for year 2021. Congratulations. Next, we have the VFW Cantigny Post Police Officers of the Year, an award given annually in recognition of outstanding performance by members of law enforcement. Patrol Officers Nicholas Giordano and Juan Santiago. During 2020, you and your partner were assigned to Sector 12 on the midnight shift. Due to your commitment, work ethic, and professionalism, you were able to proactively patrol your area of assignment and answer calls for service. Through your hard work and dedication, you were able to answer 1,106 calls for service, issue 157 citations, and write 18 ordinance violations. You made 32 felony arrests and 55 misdemeanor arrests. 18 of your arrests were for firearm offenses. You also made 13 arrests for drug offenses, two for robberies, and assisted in the apprehension of a murder suspect. Your efforts made the city of Joliet a safer place. Congratulations.
Next is the Exchange Club Police Officer of the Year, an award given annually in recognition of outstanding performance by a member of the Juliet Police Department. This year's award recipient is Detective Sean Filippiak. During 2020, you were assigned to the Investigations Division as the Juvenile Sex Crimes and Child Abuse Detective. You worked tirelessly to investigate these heinous offenses. You also took on extra duties of filing criminal complaints and seizures. You did all of this while caring for a family member that was diagnosed with a very serious health issue. Through your hard work and dedication, you were able to investigate 103 juvenile sex and child abuse cases, be the lead investigator on two homicides, participate in 134 forensic interviews of sex sexually or physically abused children, and secured warrants and arrested multiple offenders for predatory criminal sexual assault, aggravated criminal sexual assault, criminal sexual assault, murder, criminal sexual abuse, and aggravated battery. Congratulations. Okay, next, it uh, gives me great pleasure to announce some of our most recent uh, promotions uh, within the police, uh, Joint Police Department. Excuse me. Uh, when you hear your name, just uh, go on up the stage to uh, meet with the command staff, please. Lieutenant Chris Delaney is an 18-year veteran with the Joliet Police Department. However, has 20 years total of law enforcement experience. Lieutenant Delaney has worked in various areas within the police department, such as patrol, uh, neighborhood response unit, evidence technician, field training officer, and sergeant, department armorer, and currently oversees the Joliet Police Department Firearms Program, where he holds the title of Range Master. Chris has received numerous department commendations, unit merit, life-saving awards, as well as Supervisor of the Month for August 2016. Lieutenant Delaney is currently assigned to Days B Squad and proudly wears the badge number 22. Congratulations. Lieutenant Darren Porhaska is a 21-year veteran with the Joliet Police Department. Lieutenant Porhaska has worked in various areas within the police department, such as patrol and the K-9 unit. Lieutenant Porhaska has received numerous department commendations, unit merit, and division recognition awards. He is currently assigned to the Knights B Squad and proudly wears the badge number 32. Congratulations. Next, Sergeant Christopher Darcy. He's a 14-year veteran with the Joliet Police Department. Sergeant Darcy serves as a, as a department SOS member, canine handler, honor guard member, FTO, and volunteers as a department battle buddy liaison for military veterans. Sergeant Darcy has received a life-saving award, numerous department commendations, unit merit, and division recognition awards. He's currently assigned to the Knights A Squad and proudly wears badge number 55. Congratulations. And last but not least, Sergeant Corrado Venzon. He is a 15-year veteran with the Joliet Police Department, recently promoted to the rank of sergeant in May of 2021. Corrado has received various awards over his career, such as division recognition, commendations, unit merit awards, life saving, and an award of heroism. Sergeant Venzon serves as a field training officer, defensive, defensive tactics instructor, firearms instructor, and department armorer. He's currently finished up his training as, his newly, as a newly appointed sergeant and wears the badge number 47. Congratulations. <laughs> this concludes the presentation of awards. Let's have one more round of applause for all the recipients. Anybody found the car yet? <laughs> Chief Malik, can I invite you to the podium for some closing remarks?
As we conclude our ceremony, I would again like to thank all of our friends, families, co-workers, and distinguished guests for taking time out of your busy schedules and joining us in our celebration. We appreciate all of the support that all of you continue to provide. Our jobs would be so much more difficult without it. Thank you to all the members of the Jolie Police Department for continuing to work hard to follow our mission of working with the community for a safe city. Your accomplishments do not go unnoticed. I would again like to thank Mr. Lausch for coming to speak with us today. We understand how busy you are, and thank you for being here to share all of your encouraging words. They are truly appreciated. At this time, I would ask Father Chris to come up for benediction. Let us pray. Lord God, you know our comings and our goings, you know our nights and our days, you know our innermost thoughts. We praise you for everything that you do for us, and we rely upon your guidance, your wisdom, and your strength. Watch over all members of the Joliet Police Department, give your care to all first responders, so that they might have the wisdom and knowledge to know your will in carrying out their duties. Bless us in a very special way as we depart this place. Keep us in your care today and always, for we honor you as our Lord and God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father. So I was. Uh advised by my handlers that I had overlooked the uh, officers of the month. So I apologize for that. For patrol officer of the month for the year, for this past year and 2020, uh, for October 2020, Officer Nicholas Giordano, if you could please stand when your name is read. Also for October 2020, Officer Juan Santiago. For November of 2020, Officer Frank Washer. January of 2021, Officer Jonathan Rutkowski. In January for 2021, Officer James Lukasik. In February 2021, Sergeant James Rouse for Supervisor of the Month. Congratulations to you all. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, it's very important for us to recognize the hard work of some individuals that uh, is the reason why we're all in this room. Uh, first and foremost, could I have any members of the awards committee please rise and be recognized? <laughs> Thanks for the dedication of these people who meet on a regular basis. Uh, who feel it's, it's very important to recognize the good job and the great deeds that uh, we all know that we do every day. Um, however, it, it must be recognized. And thank you very much for the extra work that you guys do. Also, I would like to recognize uh, Secretary Susan Perez and Rosa Ramirez. Could you both please rise? So obviously, if, if any of you uh, either work upstairs or have poked your head in administration, they are the, the two first faces you see, and both faces always have smiles, uh, no matter what kind of day they may be having. But um, they, they are the glue with, that holds this department in check. They are certainly the, the glue that holds the administration in check. And sometimes they themselves become unglued, and it's somewhat short of entertaining. But that's just my opinion. But thank you again, thank you so much uh, for all the work you do. Um, you know, I know, I know you guys were here early, early this morning getting the room set up, and we really, really appreciate it. Um, lastly, personally, I know Mr. Lausch brought it up, and, and it just, it goes, I, I need to say it again. Um, for the families that are here, thank you. You guys live and breathe this job with us. You guys are, you guys know when to meet us at the door. You guys know when to give us a few minutes when we come in the door. But this life is, this, it's just not a job, it's a culture, and we all know this. And you guys live every second, every minute. You know, you, you know when, when things hurt, 
you know, when we celebrate things, and you support us um, unconditionally. So how about a round of applause for the families that we have that love us so much. Okay, well that about wraps things up. Again, I'm very humbled and honored to be your MC today. Hopefully I didn't sweat too much up here, and, and whoever won a car, congratulations. If you didn't, well, that was an epic failure. So, Master Pipe Major Kelly, if you please. Thank you again for coming. The Pipes and Dramas will play a tune while you depart. Enjoy the rest of your day.